Good afternoon. Uh, the purpose of this lecture uh, for today, which is being recorded on January the 27th, uh, 2021, is to talk to you about the, uh, the first experiences of uh, African Americans in what we would now call the United States uh, from 1619 to uh, hopefully we will cover the Constitution of the United States, which was ratified in uh, 1787. Um, and once again, as I stated to you in class, remember, uh, we talk about African American history being American history. Uh, and that will mean that uh, we're not going to be able to cover everything in this class, uh, but hopefully we will pique your interest so you will continue to do more research on your own. Uh, as I say to all of my students, don't accept anything I say as the, as the gospel. Uh, and uh, do research on your own. Educate yourself. Now, if we're going to pick a date when Africans first arrived in what we would call the United States, it would be the year 1619. Uh, in 1619, I've either, uh, the number I've seen is either 20 or 50 Africans will arrive uh, near Williamsburg, uh, Virginia. Now, remember what the year 1619 uh, was interesting and then in 1607, uh, Jamestown will be settled. Then in 1620, uh, Massachusetts uh, will be settled. Uh, so that would mean that you can make an argument that uh, Africans uh, came to the United States uh, before a lot of uh, the ancestors of uh, present day Europeans. Now, question, were they slaves? A uh, majority of historians will say to you that no, the first Africans were not slaves. That if anything, they were indentured servants. And that would mean that if they were indentured servants, they were supposed to work for, for uh, the person who had paid their passage to uh, what we would call the New World for about seven years. Um, and in fact, I think it's on record when the first uh, quote unquote African-American was born in the colony of Virginia. So we don't think they were slaves and we, we feel they were indentured servants. And I'm just saying to you, we're not, we're not sure, but we definitely know they would not be free as the English were who brought them to the uh, new world. When did slavery become the norm? Well, if you look at the laws of the colonies, especially the colonies of Maryland and Virginia, you will see that starting around the 1660s that uh, Africans, so let's call them African-Americans now to make it easier, were treated differently in the law than the white Americans who were uh, the colonists. And what I'm saying is in terms of punishment, starting in the 1660s, you will see that if there, if there was a crime that was committed or alleged to commit it, be committed, that Africans were treated differently in terms of the punishment uh, versus uh, the, the, the whites. And so that's where you start seeing in the law that the punishment for an African will be uh, to be put into what would be called slavery. Um, now, remember, as I've said it before, there was slavery in Africa. There was slavery in the Bible with the Egyptians. Even the children of Israel, uh, the Hebrews, after they gained their freedom, they had slaves. Every group had slaves. Uh, but the slavery that will develop in the Western world will be different because uh, the only group 
that will receive a punishment of to be put into slavery will be will be African Americans. Uh, so we start seeing those laws in the 1660s. All of the colonies will have slavery, even though, like for example, this is interesting. If you look through uh, research the history of the colony of Georgia, Georgia was not supposed to have slavery, but as the, the whites who came to settle Georgia, and many of them had been in jail because jail in England because they had owed a debt, and at that time, if you owed a debt, uh, one of your punishments was to be put in jail. They had been granted their freedom, and they had been able to come and settle Georgia, and in Georgia, slavery was not supposed to exist. Uh, there were some other colonies where it was not supposed to exist, but basically, all of the, all of the 13 colonies will have slavery uh, before the American Revolution. What did begin to transpire is that the northern colonies will, uh, because slavery was as not as economically feasible or successful, in other words, economically, it was not as profitable, you will start seeing that the northern colonies, like, like New York, uh, for example, will begin to grant freedom to their slaves. But the southern colonies, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, and those areas did not. And the reason they did not is because slaves, uh, uh, Africans were used uh, more, they were important to the economy. And their economies were dependent upon one cash crop. And that cash crop at this time was not cotton. So don't think, uh, yeah, cotton will eventually be king, but that would not be until the 1800s. At this time, the major cash crop was tobacco. Uh, and I'm not sure how many of you know anything about growing tobacco, but uh, tobacco is hard work. And part of the reason that the colonists turned to the Africans as a major labor supply is going to be because they had already tried uh, to enslave the Native Americans. That did not work because the Native Americans were not immune to certain diseases uh, that the whites uh, or the Europeans had, especially like I think smallpox and measles. Uh, they, the Native Americans were not immune to it, and those diseases were just wiping out, would wipe out a Native American tribe. So, and also, remember, when Native Americans ran away, they had a good idea as to where they were going. And so, uh, they, were, they could be more successful running away. And also, part of it is economically, uh, I may not be able to explain this well, they were not used to working the type of agriculture that the, that the Africans were used to working in. Uh, indenture service I talked about before, that was tried also, but that was not as successful because uh, I think it was by 1676, uh, there will be Bacon's Rebellion, and Bacon's Rebellion will occur because after uh, the whites had worked their seven years at indenture service, they wanted their quote-unquote freedom, which means they wanted their land, they wanted the same political rights, and so forth. And so, it's a process of that the, that the whites who were in control and who were in power needed a labor supply to work this major cash crop, which at this time was tobacco. And that will mean they can turn to uh, Africa, so they turned to Africans because of it didn't work with Native Americans, it didn't work with indigenous servitudes. Also, they turned to using Africans because of, as I tried to say in class, you know, why they, did they have slavery in Europe? Why did they have slavery in the Caribbean? Part of it goes back to the Bible, goes back to Cain and Abel, goes back to the story of Noah and his sons looking up on his uh, uh, nakedness, so they would use the Bible. Uh, they didn't believe uh, that Africans were humans. Uh, 
the, look in our culture and the different definitions of black and everything, every definition of black that you can come up with, uh, going to the dictionary is negative, except for one, as I said, you want your money in the black. Uh, and I think that's a counting term. But the definitions of black, compare the definitions of black to the definitions of white. And so what I'm saying is that it, they turn to enslavement of African Americans as their major labor supply because of all those different reasons. So in the northern colonies then, slavery will eventually die out and it's, it won't be necessarily because the white colonists in New York believe that slavery was wrong. They will come to the conclusion that economically it was not as feasible, as successful for them as it was for the as it was for the whites who were in the southern colonies. So part of it is going to be economic. So do not get the idea that northerners uh, the slavery disappeared in the north because northerners believed that African Americans were human beings. No, the dollar, money, will be the driving factor. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the American Revolution. And I hope you've had an, uh, uh, a course uh, about the history of the American Revolution. And I just want to, to say when we start getting to the Stamp Act and the Sugar Act and the Declaratory Act and the Townsend Act and all these, these different uh, issues that will upset the American colonists. Um, there will be some of them, what we would call the founding fathers, that will see uh, the contradiction of having slaves and talking about their rights being violated, rights as Englishmen being violated. That's what the American, white American colonists will when once they decide they're going to seek freedom from uh, England, is they talk about their rights uh, as Englishmen were being violated. And some of them will see the contradiction, the contradiction that they talk about their rights being violated, but then they were violating the rights of people of African descent. But as we know, some of them may have seen that contradiction, but for the majority of them, they did not see it, or if they did see it, they, it was not the driving force in what they would do. Now, one thing I want you to remember when it comes to the American Revolution, we know that the first person who will die will be a free black man, Crispus Attucks. But don't get the idea that Crispus Attucks was the only uh, uh, black man who fought in the American Revolution. Okay? I, I'm going to make this statement, and you go check me on this. Okay? Up until Vietnam, up until Vietnam, African-American men will want to fight for the United States. But initially, in the early stages of those wars, the United States, or in this case, uh, the American colonists, did not want the African-Americans to participate. Okay. And I will, I will especially highlight this point more when we get to talking about the American Civil War. So I am saying to you that once war was declared, there will always be people in the American colonies. There will be people in uh, before the Civil War in all colonies and all states that we would call free people of color. Now, sometimes they would be called free Negroes in the literature, or they would be called free people of color. But we would call them a free African-American, and that is legally, they will be free, and they would be of African descent. And you'll say, how do you be of African descent? As eventually will develop in the South, 
as long as you have one drop of African blood on your family tree, you will be black. And some of the places will have that one drop rule. Some places will have the rule that's going to be based upon at least one of your grandparents. If one of your grandparents were African, that will make you African American. Okay. And the important thing is that what I'm saying is that African Americans, free African Americans, will want to fight. Initially, George Washington did not want them in the conflict, and he will try to prohibit it from occurring. So I want you to think about it. then there's going to be this this conflict to where the American colonists are going to be battling the British for freedom of the American colonists. And it's like free people, free black people are supposed to sit back and watch. Okay? Now slaves, uh, slaves were initially George Washington did not want the slave owners to use the slave. So this was supposed to be like a white person's war. Okay. The problem will be is that of course uh, we have this strange idea and what in America what it means to be a man. And for many years, that was the feeling that African-American men would not fight. All right. And then I think some, some of the American colonists also saw it as that if African-Americans did fight, then they're going to want their freedom. Uh, so there are a lot of different reasons. But eventually, African-Americans will be able to fight on this side of the American colonists. Part of the reason that is going to happen is because of something the British did. And the governor of Virginia was a man by the name of Lord Dunsmore, D-U-N-S-M-O-R-E, Lord Dunsmore. He basically will put out a proclamation uh, that if, uh, an African, if a slave would escape, and come and fight for the British, that at the end of the conflict, no matter who won, they would be granted their freedom. Now, uh, some people would say, well, how would a slave know about that? Uh, remember, colonized or enslaved people have their own forms of communication. That's where you, when you think about African Americans communicating. How did Harriet Tubman communicate? Okay, how did she help all those uh, black men and women escape from slavery to freedom? That's where you think about uh, the spirituals, for example. So just because you know, and if any of you come from homes where your grandparents may not have a formal education. You know one thing they have is common sense. They have forms of ways to communicate. So Lord Dunsmore will put out that appeal. And what will happen? Yes, at the end of the, the American Revolution. Yes, the British will honor their commitment. And many uh, ex or slaves from the American colonies who will fight for the British. The British will help them to leave the United States, what will become the United States. And that's the reason that will be that many of the African Americans who are in Canada now are descendants of those individuals. They will take some of them to England uh, and they will go to other colonies that the British will have. So maybe part of the reason I, I guess John Washington is going to change is his attitude is going to be because of the British that the slaves were assets and the British were willing to use them and so to a degree the American colonists were also willing to use them. But I will stick by my statement. Up into Vietnam, uh, uh, it, it will be interesting that there will be wars and conflicts but whites did not want African Americans to participate because part of it is going to be the feeling is that uh, this was a white man's war or that African-American men would not fight. And um, I just find it very interesting compared to the attitude uh, that we have in 2021 about African-Americans. All right. So eventually, of course, we know that the American colonists won. And the first form of government was something called the Articles of Confederation. So, once again, I hope you know your American history. 
um, and that is the first form of government was not under the Constitution. It was under a document called the Articles of Confederation. And in the Articles of Confederation, there was a central government. Uh, Washington, D.C., the city of Washington, D.C. did not exist. Okay, uh, But there's a central government. Uh, there was uh, not a president. Um, there was a Congress. There was only one branch of Congress. Um, there were things, certain things that the central government could not do. Uh, and basically what I'm saying to you, it was a very weak form of government that lasted six or seven years. And then what will transpire in 1781 is that the, uh, the leaders of what would become the United States decided that the Articles of Confederation not, not had to be amended. But after meeting, they decided the Articles of Confederation could not be amended, but the Articles of Confederation had to be changed and replaced. That's where you get the Constitution of the United States. All right, so the rest of this lecture is going to focus on the Constitution. The Constitution of 1787. The Constitution of 1787, like the Constitution that you would see now in 2021, you will not, uh, well, let's say 1787, you do not see the word slave. Uh, you do not see the word Negro. You do not see the word white. You do not see the word black. Okay, you don't see those words in there, but there are certain is if you know if you think anything about the law. Remember, in the United States, it's a nation of laws. It is not a nation of justice. I will say that again: the United States is a nation of laws, not a nation of justice. Remember, law does not mean that you have justice. You can have a law, and the law be unjust. Uh, that's what King talked about, that you had an obligation to disobey an unjust law. And you may be wondering, uh, what, what am I saying? Remember, slavery is going to be legal. It's going to be legal in the colonies. It will be legal in certain of the states. And it will be legal in the United States. But you're not going to find that, that, uh, that frequently at least with the Constitution, that the word, you will not find the word slavery mentioned. You will not mention the word, you will not find the word slave mentioned. But there are three places in the Constitution of 1787 that dealt with African Americans. Okay. And I want you to keep in mind, part of the reason I'm having you to read uh, Thomas Jefferson's notes on Virginia is to remember, Jefferson will be the writer of the Declaration of Independence, primary writer of Declaration of Independence. Jefferson will be the third president of the United States. He will be a secretary of state. He will be the founder of the University of Virginia. He will be one of the primary founders of the United States. But his attitude is going to be representative of the attitudes that the leaders of this nation had in 1787. And those will be the ones that will, will create the Constitution of 1787. So the three places that slavery is dealt with in the Constitution, okay? But you will not find the word slave or slavery. The first one deals with the taxation and representation. Taxation and representation. Do slaves, should slaves count for representation purposes? And that is to determine how many seats each state should have in the House of Representatives? Or should slaves count for taxation? That is, were they property? So on one hand, what I'm saying is that the South wanted them to count for representation. Okay? Representation means Southern states, slave states would have more seats in the House of Representatives. Or should they count as taxation, which means this is what the North wanted, and that would mean the Southern states would have to pay more in taxes. So how should slaves count for taxation and representation? The compromise, we call it the three-fifths compromise. 
And so if you ever hear someone say that, that a black person counted as three-fifths of a person, this is what they're talking about. The compromise will be that five, basically five slaves, and look at the Constitution to see the exact word, five slaves were equal to three whites. So a black person would count for three-fifths of a person, okay? For taxation and representation purposes. That was the compromise, okay? The second place in the Constitution of 1787 that will refer to, uh, that refers to people of African descent will involve the African slave trade. The African slave trade. Now, this is really an interesting one. And the Founding Fathers, there was a conflict in their mind about the institution of slavery. And that was, was slavery a necessary evil or was it a positive good? I want you to think about it. Was slavery a necessary evil or was slavery a positive good? Okay? At this time in history, the Founding Fathers saw slavery as a necessary evil. And as you're reading Thomas Jefferson, I want you to think about it, okay? That is, uh, they had this institution that they had created where they ens and enslaved a group of people. They had become dependent upon those pe that, that group of people to do their work, okay? But they also felt it was wrong. It was a necessary evil, okay? But how did they solve the problem and get rid of that group of people? Could they let them, could they free them all? Okay. And if they freed them all, what would they do? And what I'm saying here is that they will decide that when it comes to slavery, it just didn't look one way to end slavery. And they seem to have been in favor of ending it this time, ended slavery gradually over a period of time. One way was to stop importing Africans and to put them into slavery. The Southerners are going to agree with this with a proviso. The Congress could not do that for 20 years. So what will happen here with the African slave trade is that the Founding Fathers will agree that for 20 years the African slave trade could exist. That is to bring someone from Africa in the, for the intent purposes for them to become a slave in the United States. Slave, Congress couldn't interfere with that for 20 years. But after that 20 years, Congress could end the African slave trade. And in fact, that's what Congress will do. 1808, Congress passed legislation to end the African slave trade. Notice what I said, the African slave trade. It will be illegal to bring someone from Africa to put them in slavery, but it will still be legal to sell someone from Louisville, Kentucky to Berea, Kentucky. Okay. The interstate slave trade will still be legal. So one way they hope to end slavery is if you're not producing, bringing slaves in from outside of the country, and slavery will eventually end. Now, there will also be some legislation passed to enforce it. But once again, I want you to always remember that there are laws on the books, but that doesn't mean the law is going to be enforced. No one was ever charged with violating this section of the Constitution until sometime in the American Civil War in the 1860s. So the African slave trade will still continue. It may have been illegal, but it will still continue until the 1860s. Uh, we do know, we do know uh, about the last slave ship. Uh, they will come from Africa, they will come to the United States, it will come to Mobile, Alabama. And in fact, in the last year or two, uh, it has been in the news because, uh, because of the uh, hurricanes and I guess uh, removing the silt and the sand or whatever they have been able to find the remnants of that last slave ship. And the, de and the descendants of the uh, Africans who were on that ship live in a community near 
of Mobile, Alabama. And um, so it's a, uh, so I just wanted to think about it. You can have laws on the books, but not enforce them. And this was one that was not enforced. So I hope everyone understand. The African slave trade will be ended after 1808, but not the selling of slaves within the United States. And the Africa, the, the, the law that will end the African slave trade will not be enforced. It will not be enforced until in the, I think it was in the Civil War. And we do know uh, where, the, uh, where the last slave ship from Africa landed and uh, you might want to do some research, like I said, because in the last year or two, there have been stories about this particular community of uh, uh, descendants of the Africans from that, that slave ship who exists around Mobile, Alabama, all right? And the third place in the Constitution involves what we would call the fugitive slave law. Fugitive slave law. What happens if a, a slave would escape from slavery from Virginia and get to what eventually will be Ohio. This occurs around, uh, thinking about in Maysville, Maysville, Ohio, for example, that is on, I think on the Kentucky River, the Ohio River. Uh, and sometimes African-Americans were able to escape, or you think about uh, in Louisville, uh, in Louisville, you, in Louisville, Kentucky would be slave territory, and you would have African-Americans who can uh, cross the, I think, the Ohio River, and they will make it into Indiana, what would be Indiana now. What was supposed to happen if they were able to do that? Well, according to the Fugitive Slave Law, uh, what was supposed to happen is that government was supposed to set up laws or legislation that if a slave escaped from slave territory and with the free territory, then that slave was supposed to be sent back, sent back to the slave territory. And if they escaped, and if the slave owner went to the North to recapture them, and they were successful, then the legal system was supposed to protect the rights of the slave owner and not, not the slave. And that is the property rights of the slave owner were more important than the human rights of the slave. And eventually, for example, in 1850, the Compromise of 1850, to show you how this works, uh, the legislation that will be passed that if a slave owner went to, let's say, Cincinnati, and recaptured a slave, okay, had that slave or that African American put in jail, okay, they were supposed to go before a judge. And if the judge said, that this African American is a is free, the judge was supposed to get five dollars. But if the judge said that this African American is a slave and should go back to his slave owner, then the judge got ten dollars. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. Uh, but there will be some places in the north, uh, especially around uh, I think Oberlin, Ohio, and and I think. Uh, uh, where Antioch College is located, that there will be, eventually there will be whites who refuse to allow this to be enforced. And I, the problem with this legislation, there are many problems with it. One of them would be that if you will have slave catchers. Or whites could go into northern areas and if they captured a black person, for whatever reason they wanted to, they could just they saw them on the street, they were by themselves. They would kidnap them. They would bring them back to the north, back to the south, or bring them to the south because there were African Americans who were born in the north. They, north. they would bring them to the south. Legally, the options for that African American were limited because what you also started having, back to my argument about you can have law and not have any justice, that the laws will be that blacks were not supposed to uh, testify against someone white in court. And even if they did, normally, normally, the, the judges and the juries will believe the white person before they would believe the black person. So even if a black person was in the North and they were free, 
and they were captured or kidnapped, kidnapped, and put on a ship, for example, and brought to the South and forced to work, uh, you will find the judicial system will support the slave owner and will not support this African American. Remember, African Americans who were free, those free people of color I talked about before, they were supposed to have identification to verify that they were free. But if once they were captured by or kidnapped by that white person and their papers were taken away from them, they were in a very difficult position and they may never have seen freedom again. So, yes, there will be free people of color. But remember, their existence were, was perilous. So, the first Constitution of the United States, Constitution of 1787, three-fifths compromise that dealt with taxation and representation. The African slave trade was made illegal after 1808. However, the law basically was not enforced and the interstate slave trade between states within the United States did not end. And that will mean that slavery will grow. Part of the reason it will grow is because even when we study Thomas Jefferson, remember, the slave took on the status of the mother. The slave took on the status, I mean, the African, the man, the African American took on the status of the mother. Children that were produced uh, out of a sexual relationship, rape, or, or even if it was consensual, if it was possible to be consensual, and I'm not sure if it was possible, but those children took on the status of the mother. And if the mother was a slave, that meant the child became a slave. So back to what I said before with Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson had children with Sally Hemings. Sally Hemings was a half-sister of Thomas Jefferson's wife because they had different mothers. Sally Hemings' mother was a slave and Thomas Jefferson's wife's mother was free. The father was a white male and that meant that the children took on the status of uh, the mother, they were slaves, and thus Sally Hemings was a slave, and thus her descendants were a slave, unless Thomas Jefferson freed them, and he did. George Washington, did he free the slave? He did. Okay? So, there will be slave owners who will free the slaves. There will be ways to get freedom, like to, like I talked about earlier, participating in war. You might have a skill or a trade, and the slave owner allowed the slave to buy their freedom. The slave owner might come get a conversion and come to the conclusion that slavery was wrong. Do not think it was religion. Okay? Part of the reason we have a Southern Baptist, and there's something else called American Baptist, who are Northern Baptist, was over the issue of slavery. You will find that most Christians in the South will support slavery and they will use the section of the Bible where Paul talks about slaves obeying your masters to justify slavery. So the slave owners, when they have a religious conversion, that did not mean that they were going to be against slavery. They can have the religious conversion and still be slave owners. All right. So this should have, this hopefully has you prepared as you sit down and read uh, the notes on Virginia, the excerpt from Thomas Jefferson. For Jefferson, like so many twice of his time period, was struggling over this issue of slavery. He will see it as a necessary evil. I think he will later write uh, that he felt that slavery was going to be the downfall of the Union of the United States, he saw it as a problem. But Jefferson also makes it clear he has a problem with freeing black people because he came to the conclusion, uh, as you will read, that he felt that black people had a memory. 
and they weren't going to forget what was going to happen to them. And so the question for Jefferson was, could, could free blacks and free whites live together in the same environment? And uh, he really didn't think it was possible. And that's the reason, as I said in class the other day, Thomas Jefferson believed in colonization. Colonization, the American Colonization Society, uh, will be an organization that Jefferson will play a role in starting that will buy land in Africa in the nation we now know as Liberia and free the slaves and send them to Liberia to live. But Thomas Jefferson never did get around to freeing his slaves. So he may have had some misgivings about slavery, but he never did free his slaves, but some others did. So, and so Jefferson does some other things, but that hopefully we can talk about next Tuesday. So please do some reading on your own and read about the Constitution and uh, the early Constitution and how it applied to African Americans. Think about the difference between just laws and unjust laws. Uh, do some reading about the American colonies and how northern colonies will end slavery and southern colonies tended not to. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Yes, learning should be enjoyable. All right, take care, everyone. Bye.